Welcome to Wonder Mints. On the 23rd of January 1960, US Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh and Swiss engineer Jacques Picard were the first people to dive 7 miles or 11 kilometres to the bottom of the ocean in the Mariana Trench. These men were true pioneers and the journey to this amazing record in 1960 was not an easy one. Let's see how they did it. The US Navy purchased their Trieste submarine in 1959 and performed a number of tests to ensure that it was capable of withstanding the massive amounts of water pressure that would be crushing the experienced divers. The Trieste would go in to perform 64 different dive trials before the project was finally given the green light to dive in the Mariana Trench in Guam. The expedition set out on January 23rd and started with a four-day haul out to the area above the Mariana Trench. The sea was extremely rough during the day and several of the instruments used to measure current and weather conditions had broken as a result of the rough weather. Things had started badly, but nevertheless the team decided they would be launching in the morning. Torches were placed by a US Navy destroyer to mark the spot where the dive should begin. The bottom had also been sounded using more than 800 TNT countermeasure explosions to find the deepest point. After some technical work, the Trier still had several broken parts. The crew decided to proceed without some of the main instruments that they would use to monitor conditions underwater. As long as the main instruments and main electrics for controlling ballast release were in place, Don Walsh and Jacques Picard were ready to go. The two only had an undersea telephone to link them to the surface. As the dive began at 8.23am, the Trieste and her divers are lowered into rough and warm seas with great anxiety. At 300 feet down, the sub began to slow down as a layer of cold water was reached. Because of the slowing descent, the crew was forced to make quick calculations and open the gasoline valve to improve the speed of descent rather than wait for a machine that would cool the float and allow for a speedier descent. They were able to let out a safety release of expendable gasoline. Eventually through the control of the gasoline float, the team was able to speed the descent so that they could resurface in the daylight. Moving at just one meter or three feet per second, they were able to see phytoplankton followed by utter nothingness further down. Surprisingly, the team was able to maintain their telephone contact even at 13,000 feet and beyond. By the time they reached 24,000 feet, Walsh made a comment that they have officially reached a depth where no one else had been. Even at 26,000 feet, they were still able to maintain conversation between the carrier, the tugboat and themselves. At 32,500 feet, the sub had an immense pressure of over 150,000 tonnes being placed upon it. It was then they heard a dull crack and a shot through the cabin. They had no idea what the noise was. Should they risk going further? Should they return to the safety of the surface? Maybe they wouldn't even get to the surface. They made some initial equipment checks and weighed up their chances. They decided to continue despite the risks. The shakes and cracking continued. The two finally reached the bottom at 1306 hours, now with over 200,000 tonnes of water pressing down on the submarine. They were greeted strangely enough by a small fish swimming past, happily living in the extreme cold and pressure at the bottom of the ocean. As the two began to resurface, they discovered what the shudder and noise had been. They turned on the rear searchlight and saw the porthole in the rear of the sub. The large entry tube in the viewing port had cracked, fortunately only the plexiglass. The two were in no danger, but the cracks had placed extra pressure on the cabin making exit from the craft difficult. The ascent went without a hitch. The Trieste performed remarkably well and the sub was able to break the top of the water at 1646 hours. It's amazing what Don Walsh and Jacques Picard accomplished considering the relatively basic technology. After their 1960 effort, it wasn't until James Cameron came along with Deep Sea Challenge in 2012 that others were able to walk in their footsteps. James Cameron was able to reach the same depth in a faster time, but the dive to Challenger Deep in January of 1960 would be a feat untouchable for over 52 years. There's no underestimating what can be achieved by dreaming big, staying determined, and having balls of steel that won't crack even under 200,000 tonnes of water pressure. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Wonder Mints for new videos every week. And let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next.